Hi, and welcome to 16.4 Mass Energy Equivalents. We finally made it. We're talking about E is equal to MC squared. I would imagine this is at least one of the equations you knew before coming into this class, and we're rounding off the entire curriculum uh, by having a lesson about it. So let's get right into it. Number one says the total conversion of one kilogram of the sun's mass into energy yields what? So we have the mass is one kilogram, and we're going to use this formula, so we better get points for units. C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and we're looking for the energy. So E is equal to mc squared. The energy is equal to 1 kilogram of mass times c squared, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. So you end up getting, well, 3 times 10 to the 8 squared times 1 kilogram is going to be 9 times 10 to the 16. And then what are our units here? Well, we only have one choice, but are we going to go mega electron volts? or joules uh, we're gonna it's gonna be choice d but i wanted to show you why it's joules right so if we look at these units we have a kilogram times a meter per second that's being squared so that's going to be a kilogram meter squared per second squared so how is that equivalent to a joule if you think back joule is the unit for energy and work and we said work was equal to the force times the displacement force is measured so the uh, work is measured in joules force is measured in newtons displacement is measured in meters um, and then force uh, f is equal to m a so one newton is equal to a kilogram times a is meter per second squared so take this newton out of there one joule is equivalent to a kilogram meter per second squared times a meter and a meter times a meter is a meter squared so this is where we get this um, kilogram meter squared per second squared is equivalent to one joule um, so if they ever try to trick you by throwing like a electron volt uh, type of unit for energy remember this formula um, as long as you plug in c for meters per second and m is in kilograms it's going to pop out a joule for your energy all right, and now it's saying the energy equivalent of 5 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms. So we'll write our givens. Our unknown is energy again. We'll use the equation E is equal to mc squared. Substitute in our values. And when you solve, you get 4.5 times 10 to the 14 joules. Choice C. Okay. Um, cool. Cool. So that's just practicing, like, don't forget to square that. Even though it's kind of weird, like, the speed of light in a vacuum is a huge number, and you want me to square it? Yeah, don't forget to square it. It's pretty crazy. All right, number three, the energy equivalent of the rest mass of an electron is approximately what? So they are telling you the mass, but we'll need to look at the reference table to figure out what it is. On page one of the reference table, towards the bottom, they tell you the rest mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. That's what we'll use for our mass, and if that mass was totally converted into energy, we would use E is equal to mc squared uh, to figure that out. Substitute in your values and you get a value of uh, 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. So not a whole lot of energy, but it's just one electron being converted. Um, if you take the mass of one proton and convert it into energy, what will it yield? So again, we'll look at the reference table to find the mass of a proton. And right underneath the mass of electron, they tell you the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So it's the mass of a proton. We'll plug that into E is equal to mc squared. And now it's a larger mass, so we would expect a larger amount of energy, and that's what we get. Um, we get an answer of 
times 10 to the negative 10 joules. So larger than before, still not a whole lot. But again, this is just one proton being converted. Number five, what is the minimum total energy released when an electron and its antiparticle, which is known as a positron, annihilate, annihilate each other? So you have an electron with some mass coming in, and you have the positron coming in over here. That has some mass, and then they annihilate each other. So that mass is totally converted to energy all right so you want to look at what is the total mass that we have that's going to be converted to energy both of these masses get converted um, so we just found where to find the mass of the electron it's uh, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms but what's the mass of its antiparticle the positron well it's actually the same exact mass as the electron it just has a positive charge. That's what makes it an antiparticle. It's opposite charge. So we'll use the same mass, um, but remember, now there's two of them, the electron and the positron together. So I wrote that off to the side here. Here's for the electron, and then I wrote like the anti-electron or the positron. Same mass, okay? And we'll use the same formula. E is equal to m c squared but now we'll do like this it's the total mass so m plus m e with the line over it kind of hard to see but anyway i'll plug in the numbers you can see it's just the two masses being added together and since they are the same exact one if you wanted to you could just do um, times two instead and if you do that you get an energy of 1.64 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. Okay, so that's gonna be choice A. Uh, number six, what total mass must be converted into energy to produce a gamma photon with an energy of 1.03 times 10 to the negative 13 joules? So now they're telling you the energy and they want you to find the mass. So we'll use the same formula, E is equal to mc squared. And if you wanted to, you could solve for the mass first, m is equal to E over c squared, then substitute in your values. And when you solve, you get a mass of 1.14 repeating times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms, choice A. Nice, all right, so those are pretty straightforward, just plugging it in. Uh, number seven, which graph best represents the relationship between energy and mass when matter is converted into energy? So we're looking for the relationship between those two things. Hey, it's the formula we've been using the whole time. So what is the relationship between energy and mass? Is it a direct relationship, inverse, uh, exponential, inverse square? Hopefully you could see it's going to be a direct relationship um, if the mass doubles, the energy doubles, and that's going to be choice A. It's a direct relationship. All right, so number eight says a tritium nucleus is formed by combining two neutrons and a proton. The mass of this nucleus is 9.106 times 10 to the negative 3 universal mass units less than the combined mass of the particles from which it's formed. Approximately how much energy is released when this nucleus is formed? So this is like kind of a different one here. So we have two neutrons coming together with a proton, and they combine together. And as they combine together, what happens is you release some energy. This is called binding energy. And then you end up with the two neutrons and the proton bounds together in the nucleus. And then if you wanted to, you could do the reverse. If you had the nucleus to begin with and you wanted to split the nucleus up, you would just have to um, use the same amount of binding energy and that splits it up into its individual particles. But for now, we're like taking the separate ones and we're combining them. And what this is saying is the total mass here is actually less than the total mass here because some of that mass is converted into energy so if you took like the mass of each neutron 
the mass of the proton and you add them all together, this total mass is equal to 5.01 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. But when they're bound together in the nucleus, they're that much minus 9.106 times 10 to the negative 3 universal mass units. Okay? It's that much less. Um, we don't have to calculate what the total mass of this is. What they're asking is how much energy is released when the nucleus is formed. So this much mass was converted into energy. So all we have to do is convert this much universal mass units into a mega electron volt. All right, so we need to know the conversion factor. Actually, all of this stuff is just background knowledge, and all you need to be able to do is convert um, universal mass units into mega electron volts. And luckily, that conversion is given to you on the front of the reference table. And we can see on the front of the reference table here that one universal mass unit is equivalent to 9.31 times 10 to the 2 mega electron volts and with that we have covered the entire reference table are you kidding me did every single thing now we've talked about every except for like i guess we didn't do geometry and trigonometry but that's kind of like prerequisite knowledge that you should know and it's nice that they give it to you we don't have to go over it in class pretty crazy right and then and people are like what about this one well that's just the shortcut formulas for the vector uh, components, so we know those. Pretty crazy, right? We did every single thing. You should be very proud of yourself. You know the entire New York State physics reference table and all the knowledge that goes along with it. So let's use this. This is just a conversion factor from mass to energy. It's basically E equals MC squared, um, but they're doing all the unit conversions for you. Okay, so let's take the universal mass unit that they give us and convert it to mega electron volts. So 9.106 times 10 to the negative three universal mass units times, multiply by some parentheses, put a line in the middle, all right? We want the units to cancel out so the U goes on the bottom and the mega electron volt goes on top. And in the reference table, they tell you one universal mass unit is equal to 9.31 times 10 to the 2 mega electron volts, okay? So we just multiply the two numbers together. These cancel out, and you get 8.477686, so just 8.48 mega electron volts. That's how much energy this mass gets converted into. It's actually released when the uh, nucleus is formed. All right, cool. Um, nine, the graph below shows the relationship between energy and equivalent mass from which it can be converted. So they're plotting the energy versus the mass. The slope of this graph represents what? So remember, slope is rise over run, y divided by x. All right, delta Y over delta X. Well, what are our Y values in this case? The change in energy over the change in mass. So we need to figure out what is E divided by M equivalent to. Happens to be, you know, a giveaway because we're dealing with uh, E equals MC squared in this lesson. But if you were taking a cumulative test such as the physics regions, um, it might not be as apparent because you don't have E equals MC squared directly on the brain and know that that whole physics regions has to do with that, right? So um, you can see we divide by M, divide by M, and we see that E over M, the slope of that graph is equivalent to C squared, okay? So it's going to be choice B. Great. Number 10. The diagram below represents the sequence of events, steps 1 through 10, resulting in the production of a D minus meson and a D plus meson. An electron and a positron, or an anti-electron, collide in step one. They annihilate each other, which is step two, and become energy, which is step three. This energy produces an anti-charm quark and a charm quark here. 
which then split apart uh, steps five through seven. And as they split, a down quark and an anti-down quark are formed, leading to the final production of a D minus meson and a D plus meson. Nice. Okay, so all of that. And then the question is, which statement best describes the changes that occur in this sequence of events? Choice A says energy is converted into matter, and then matter is converted into energy. Choice B says matter is converted into energy, and then energy is converted into matter. Both those sound kind of good. C, not so much. It says isolated quarks are being formed from baryons. So... I guess you could call these isolated quarks. No, you can't. Like, this is two quarks together. So these are definitely not isolated quarks. And they're definitely not being formed from baryons. Electrons are leptons. So choice C is definitely out. Hadrons are being converted into leptons. No, these are not hadrons, and these are not leptons, okay? What's happening is leptons are being converted into mesons, if you wanted to say something like that. But they didn't. So instead, we have choice A and B. And you want to ask yourself, what did we start with in step one? Are those two things matter or energy? And hopefully you're saying to yourself, these are matter that can get converted into energy. And then that energy is converted back into matter, which is choice B. Okay, nice. All right. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.